ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the greatest NZ live political podcast in the world, The Working Group, hosted by beloved left-wing broadcaster Comrade Bomber Bradbury, with the best political panel in New Zealand media, reviewing the week, setting the agenda, avoiding defamation. The Working Group is brought to you by Gravity Credit Management. When the weight of capitalism is becoming the event horizon of an imploding black hole, call 0800 Gravity and our team will get blood out of a stone. That's 0800 Gravity. This is The Working Group. Kia ora, Aotearoa. I'm your host, the editor of the the Daily Blog, Martin Bradbury. Hashtag socialism, hashtag solidarity, hashtag depressed. QAnon, anti-vaxxer, incel, free market, lunatics to the right of me, insufferably humorless, middle-class, woke cancellation, lynch mobs to the left of me. And here I am, dear listener, stuck in the radical middle with you. This is... As the working group, New Zealand's best and greatest weekly political podcast that isn't funded by New Zealand On Air. Joining me tonight to discuss the big issues is the greatest political panel in New Zealand broadcasting history. When our first panellist orgasms, he cries out, Milton Friedman! <laughs> in a desperate attempt to put off the Grim Reaper by extending his life expectancy by six weeks, he endlessly brags on social media about how far he jogs each morning when the truth is that the vast majority of us wish he'd just stop jogging and start dying. He hasn't met an armed white Christian nationalist he doesn't like or defended. He's an ideological peacock in a parliament of drab owls. I'd say he was the 15th most important heteronormative white cis male columnist at Stuff, but based on the current media environment, Stuff might not actually exist by the time this podcast comes out. The libertarian liquidator. The Cthulhu of capitalism. Ladies and gentlemen, lock up your elderly parents in case he convicts them, convinces them to get a reverse mortgage and donate it all to ACT. Damien, all tax is theft. Grant, kia ora welcome back from the summer one word to describe the week please sir uh i'm gonna give two words um madison reedy uh, madison reedy mm. gave an interview of to adrian Orr, and it was magnificent mm. i guarantee you adrian Orr looked at madison reedy and thought ah oh, she's she's a bit lightweight she'll be she'll be in awe of old adrian it'll be wonderful madison reedy did her homework turned up there and just clobbered him like a baby seal until there was nothing but a red stain on the ice. If you haven't watched Madison Reedy taking Adrian Orr out to the back of the bite shed and just smash him apart, I recommend you do one of the as a fantastic interview. So that's my that's my word, Madison Reedy. Our next panellist has burnt more bridges than Honey Hecke has chopped down flagpoles. He successfully sued Mike Hosking for defamation and hilariously donated it to the Māori Party. Let's all just pause and think of how Mike Hosking must have looked when he found that out. <laughs> Screw Mike Hosking. The president of the Māori Party, the one, the only, the mighty John Tamahiri. Kiora, comrade. Welcome back to the show. One word to describe the week, please, sir. Oh, I think we've got a marvellous Prime Minister. He's, got, he's just released another 39-point plan. <laughs> yeah, this guy's going to beat Marzi Tung. I, 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 think, <laughs> I, think, I think it's a sensational start after the first 100 days. Uh, but but uh, let, let's unpack that um, as we get into this. Mm. Uh, and last but certainly not least... He's a high-ranking Māori Jedi who is the last socialist standing because I'm the first socialist lying down. New Zealand Herald columnist, political commentator and broadcaster, Shane Tapao. Kia ora, comrade. Kia ora, Welcome back to the show. Yeah. One, week, one word to describe the week, please, sir. JT, as he often bloody well does, he stole my march. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to comment on the Prime Minister, but I just say bullshit. You know, today... We look at his, I, I don't know whether it's a 36 plan, a 69 plan, a bloody uh, a, a 39 plan, but it was goobity gook. Yeah. It was corporate speak. Actually, that corporations don't use, don't use anymore. And uh, I think it just uh, shows a, a bit of a fallacy that uh, most New Zealanders, sorry, that many New Zealanders knew in October of last year. And that's simply the math does not add up. Let's get into the first show of season 2024, issue one. Can the government justify 19 billion in tax cuts and tax breaks for the richest amongst us when so much is underfunded and the economy heads into recession? Issue two, is Māori and Pacifica space on campus akin to the KKK separatism and segregation? And issue three tonight, has Chippy done enough to not be rolled as leader of the Labour Party? No. 
Plus, we'll also have a final word at the end of the show where each panellist can sound off to see who will breach broadcasting <coughs> standards this week. It'll be Damien defending a legal body organ market again. Let's kick things off tonight with issue one. The first 100 days of this hard right, racist, climate denying, beneficiary bashing government has vomited up a blamage of culture war of revenge fantasies masquerading as social policy. While this government is implementing the most extreme austerity since Ruth Richardson and Roger Douglas, they are sk- They are planning a $2.9 billion tax break for the richest landlords and $16 billion in tax cuts that we can't afford. Damien, John Key, Matthew Hooten and the IMF are not card-carrying members of the Communist Party. Reduce spending and um, uh, cut taxes by even more than they um, uh the other way around. So the, the the plan is to borrow money to cut uh, to cut taxes. Of course, um, they tried that in the United Kingdom, and that premiership did not last very well. But in defence of Nicola Willis, I want to point out that these are based on Treasury's predictions, and they've been pretty awful. And the one thing we know about Treasury predictions is they're about as a, about as useful as opinion polls, just catastrophically pointless. But the one thing that what I am hoping it signals is that Nicola Willis plans to do something about spending. So spending's gone from $81 billion in 2017 to $140 billion now. So $16 billion of tax cuts. We've only got to roll back spending two or three years, and she can pay for her tax cuts. So we were talking before, we've got to cut a couple of government departments, you know, what was it, the Women's Department? That needs to go. Yes. The Productivity Commission, that's gone. Mm-hmm. The Human Rights Commission, that definitely needs to go. Right. I mean, Waka Katokai, I think that's already gone now, isn't it? They call it something else. But nonetheless, the entire thing should be shut down. There is just so many things that need to be closed down. Don't cut. Cut taxes is great, <clears> but they've got to cut um, spending. Well, let's look at that. Follow-up question. The economy is in recession. Basic Keynesian theory tells us the state needs to step in, not step away. Are we on track for a Liz Truss run on the market once National reveal their budget? We can't implement standard Keynesian policy because of the recklessness of Grant Robinson and Adrian Orr. We are now in a situation where we have high inflation. And so what do you do when you have high inflation? You can't run... A, a, a Keynesian expansion program in that situation, you've actually got to um, do something to reduce inflation. So, and the way to do that is to uh, increase interest rates. We're all we are already running a massively expansionist state. So right now, this government is looking at borrowing more money to pay the hundred and forty billion dollars of spending that this reckless Grant Robinson has given. Us. So, no, we're not dealing with standard Keynesian economics. Besides, Keynesian economics never worked anyway. John, the minimum wage increase this week is 2%, yet inflation is running at 4.7%, while Stephen Joyce is getting $4,000 a day to sell out infrastructure to the trucking industry. Why do we have all this money for rich people, but not hungry kids at school? Yeah, well, we all know why that is, and that's because we've got the type of government we've got. Um, so so I, I think that uh, the biggest problem this government's got is, is it's going to have to borrow mm. uh, to fund uh, its rich mates. Uh, and it doesn't see a problem in having to do that. It then, it then says it falls off fiscal cliffs that they've come upon. That's bullshit, right? Because we, we all know that um, and the Fiscal Responsibility Act on, and a number of other uh, um, pieces of um, documentation and very robust documentation at that, that it's just bullshit to say that, right? What is wrong is where you go out on the front foot in election campaigns and promise things that haven't been worked out properly in terms of numbers. Now, that's that's not the problem of the Treasury, and that's not the problem of um, uh, all the advice that uh, they, they are taking. Mm. It's uh, they're overpromising, overreaching. Mm. Now that now she says she's going to have to resign. <clears throat> she can't bring it home. Right, right. Mm. She's going to bring it home, but yeah. at what cost? Going to have to borrow. Yeah. Okay. Now, not who do you blame? Do you blame Robertson for that? Yes. Or do you blame Willis and Co for overpromising? Yeah. Well, of course yeah. you have to. You have to say the national government has overpromised. Therefore, it's going to have to overborrow. Right. FUQ, can, can not do it, can not do it. After implementing their 100 <clears throat> day slash and burn program, Chris Bishop rewarded his razor gang with crayfish. Crayfish for them, 
austerity and job job cuts for us. The the optics of this politically is damaging, isn't it? Well, not to the people that funded them <clears throat> and support them. They love it. So yeah. what? Yeah, was yeah. The, what so, was so, the taxpayers, so taxpayers. So taxpayers. <clears throat> so he gave them crush, so, crayfish. So the, the kids got no lunch. And they got crayfish. <laughs> right? Yeah. It actual, doesn't look good, does it? It's as simple as that. Yeah. So actual yeah. crayfish or metaphorical crayfish? No, no, actual no, crayfish. Actual, actual bloody crayfish, crayfish, crayfish. Uh, uh, mate. Pro- pro- yeah. Probably, probably, nice. probably through uh, Uhu Kai Moana. Yeah, probably. That, that opposed. Yeah. The, <laughs> that, op- that, that opposed the um, Kermitic sanctuary on the basis that uh, Hapu and Iwi weren't consulted uh, enough. And what have we got now? We've got no sanctuary. Uh. And our brother from Te Taitukuro is saying, well, actually, not only are we going to fish the hell of those waters, but let's try a bit of sea mining while we're at it. Shane, uh, can the government get its $19 billion tax cut and tax break program for the richest through if they distract voters mm. by bashing beneficiaries, bashing gang members, bashing renters, Bashing workers, bashing hungry kids at school, bashing the environment and bashing body because no one ever lost a vote in New Zealand yeah. bashing those they, groups. They, they, they can do that for not for, for those not for those reasons, but they are they, they, they are additives to it. But they can do it and they'll have to do it through one or two ways. They'll have to do it by borrowing more going forward or a huge austerity uh, program that will split this government. Uh, sooner rather than later because say what you want about Winston he understands that it will be his core his core support I'm talking about the two or three percent not the two or three not the two or three added on in, in terms of the cookers but his core two or three percent that will be worse off as a result of our and that's older folks in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Follow-up question. Over the summer, Winston and David have continued to undermine mm. Christopher Luxon at every stage. If this government were a fable, it would be a scorpion riding on a fox's face sitting on the jaws of a great white shark. How long before Winston and Seymour gloriously turn on each other? Uh, what are we now? We're six months. <laughs> no, we're six months into six it. Six months in, yeah. Uh, Winston's got an 18-month term as uh, right. Deputy Prime Minister. He didn't choose the first half on... Uh, uh, just by chance, he chose it. He chose it. He chose it purposely because he knew that the numbers, that the original numbers in terms of uh, the national party and the economic forecast, weren't going to work out. The country is going to turn to custard. We are in a double dip recession. And here's the other thing: unemployment numbers going up. We're looking at 5.2 percent. What does that mean for the regions? Probably 8 percent. What does that mean for Māori and Pacifica? 10 to 12 percent mm. and what we do know from our own experience AJT eh, mm. once we get to that we're looking at generational bloody hurt so it only takes a few years to get into that quagmire mm. but it takes a long time to dig ourselves out of it quick round will Nicola Willis be forced to resign if she doesn't implement tax cuts this budget Damien she will implement tax cuts she won't resign JT mm. she'll implement tax cuts but they won't be to the extent that yeah. was promised mm. so it's it's see, you see the, the problem with this government mm. is um how much of their promise is going to be achieved, huh. right? It's not all. Is some going to be good enough? That's the question. Right. Shane? Uh, she'll delay, she'll delay, she'll stagger, she'll add add other taxes on that. She won't call taxes. She'll call them levies, where there'll be uh, uh, increasing car registrations, uh, as, as they've done, um, reintroducing in another shape or form uh, petrol tax. You know, they're only suspending it. So, so she, she will do that. But sooner or later... And I think it's sooner rather than later, it's all going to catch up because the simple maths do not add up. We have to move on, Colin. But aren't we we looking at, because traditionally I would have expected this or a government in this situation not to introduce tax cuts for another 18 or two months or so. Because you want to be releasing your real tax cuts six to eight months out from the next election. Mm. So it doesn't make sense for Willis to actually introduce big tax cuts now. It's an election unless, promise. Winston, yeah. unless Winston no, it's goes an election, in 18 yeah. months. It's an election yeah. promise. It's yeah. an election promise. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but see, yeah, come, in, come on, election promises. They're more kind of... <laughs> yeah, more kind right. of Tell us what yes. they really are, Damien. Yeah. Go on. Your mates aspir- can lie, right? Yeah. 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 With impunity. Yeah. <laughs> They're aspirations. But Damien, you do... we to a cross. You do have a point because actually... The uh, tax cuts they're talking about to most New Zealanders don't mean a No, that's right. Two that's bucks. Right. Yeah, Two yeah. bucks. Fifteen, fif- fifteen bucks it's for not, me. It's not the substance. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's not. It's, it's, not, it's not, not about the substance. <laughs> Two big Mac combos. I tell you, mm. I tell you this, there, there, there's a really interesting dynamic. You look at um, childcare, and you can see the difference in emphasis about the, the national and act. 
So Luxon comes out there and says they give an extra seventy five bucks for twelve percent of people that currently qualify. No, no, no. no for twelve percent of people who current, Shane, currently qualify. Shane, Shane, let me finish. Um, uh, Luxon's coming out there saying I'm going to give an extra seventy five dollars for, for some people for, for, for people who for qualify. Shane, well, I'm going to mute you in a second. <laughs> um, but but um, uh, Act are coming out there and saying you know what we need to do, we need to change the regulatory environment around childcare so childcare is actually cheaper for it to be provided because at the moment part of the problem with childcare is something like 50 or 60 percent of your workers must have a four-year degree or whatever which means effectively it's it can become quite expensive to, to provide childcare and so but the point what i was saying is that there is a quite a different approach in the way that both parties are thinking about this issue, and you can see it in childcare. Yeah, well, Lux, yeah, Luxon yeah, just says, yeah. "I'll give some." In a hundred years' time, I, I agree mm. with you. But mm. see, we haven't got a hundred years to wait around mm. to, to, to work that's out whether what child... you've just said is going to work. And also, that's not why childcare is so expensive. Should, shouldn't shouldn't childcare no, no, be nationalised? That's not why childcare is so is so expensive. That's because the profit margins are good. Mm. We have we have one one uh, employer that. Gets in over two hundred and sixty million dollars, which is more than the entire Kohanga Reo Kohanga Reo network. Then they set up these mock bullshit bloody charities, and that give and and they pay themselves and uh, and other entities such as the platform uh, we need, to we need, do that. Those, we are need the, to those, those are the those are the real issues, and I can tell you what what will happen because of the issue of um, uh, poor demand, uh, poor supply of trained um, staff. Um, it'll, it'll be all about su- supply and demand. In fact, what will happen is that the profit-making entities will pocket that money and prices will rise. So do you really believe that it takes four years? Yes, absolutely. So, I think. So, we, so we have a situation mm. where, uh, all right, I could provide a competent individual to look after your children while you go to work, mm-hmm. but um, and I can do that for, I don't know, 50 bucks a day, make up a number, um, or I can provide a gold-plated one where somebody's had four years of training, but that's going to cost you 150 bucks. And you're saying, no, 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 that woman or that family that wants to take advantage of the $50 a week by the competent woman looking after the kids, that's illegal and you can't well, do it. Had- by your, by your, by, and this, mm. is, this is where I think yeah. Seymour is on the money. He's saying, let the market decide. If you want to provide childcare services without half the staff having a four-year qualification, you can do that. And that means that ch- the cost of childcare comes down. Would you want your working... kid looked after by someone who wasn't properly trained, though? This is your um, child. Yeah. My, my, my child is currently predominantly looked after by somebody who has absolutely no qualifications in childcare whatsoever, and it's called a wife. <laughs> and the idea, the idea... That looking after a child, reading a child a story, keeping them safe, and changing their nappies requires four years of nah, education. I would, I would hate to be nah, Damien right, when he gets yeah. home tonight. We but have to move on, yeah. comrades, to issue two. In an offensive and outrageous move, Act New Zealand First and National have called Māori Space and Pacifica Space at Auckland University Ku Klux Klan, Separatism and Segregation. Māori Space, Pacifica Space, Space, queer space and women's space have all existed on campus for four decades. These spaces provide important resources for those students to access along support and counselling. Professor Collins helped set up Pacifica Space. Professor Ranganui Walker helped set up Māori Space. Dedicated feminists helped set up women's space. And pioneering rainbow community activists helped set up queer space. John, Act New Zealand First and National are all competing for culture war bullshit rhetoric against spaces that have been at Auckland University for over 40 years. Does this suggest a hard-right government that needs to distract voters, or is this the new woke purge? Oh, look, I, I, I don't want to dignify um, those, those three with uh, commentary other than to say I was there on the campus mm. when we got yeah. um, quotas in at law school yeah. and at med school. Now, the, the problem Māori have um, is, is that... Um, Predominantly large numbers, the largest numbers, over 85% go to decile um, mm-hmm. one to four schools. The pass out rates from those schools, um, regardless of how well educated the teachers are, are very poor. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so what happens is when they when they can get to university, 
uh, there, there is an opportunity for them to uh, get into a uh, quota system. Here's the takeaway. 98% of every Māori that has gone through that system has passed, right? Yeah. Would never have got there, would never have got there but for the quota. Right. Right. But would never have got there because of the pernicious mm. way in which the public education system works for poor communities, right? So, so, so the issue of getting more Māori, Pacific Island, and others in, is, mm. it's pretty. It's a pretty simple logic framework. It's worked around the world, whether it's Black Americans, whether it's Hispanics, or wherever, whether it's Hawaiians or whatever, works here. Works very well, and it does no injustice to anybody else in regard to getting um, access, mm. apart from saying that there's space is taken. Mm. Well, if there's space is taken, give the white men more. Follow-up question. The great mm. Professor Ranganui Walker, who helped set up Māori Space, once said, I have no time for privileged people who take advantage of their privileged position to attack the weakest people in our society. What do you think he would say if he was alive today looking at this debate? Oh, look, it was Rangi and Pat that were our two senior uh, mm. drivers. Mm. So, um, Pat who, sorry? Oh, sorry. Hohepa. Yeah, Pat Hohepa. Mm. You just passed the away. greats, mm. the greats. Yeah, yeah, so two greats, right? And uh, they were vilified, demonised, mm -hmm. uh, made made their life was made very difficult yeah. for them, uh, having having the tenacity and and the temerity to speak their truth mm. for us. So they're well ahead of their game, right? But these guys right now are endeavouring to turn the clock right back now. Um, that, that ain't going to happen. We ain't going to let that happen. That ain't Shane, ever going to happen. Shane, to mm. attack Māori mm. space and Pacifica space is also to attack women's space and yeah. queer space. Isn't this redneck fuckwittery 101? It, it, I mean, what, why it, should it, we it, allow it, these right-wing fanatics? It, well, we we won't. It, it, it just it, it, it's a it's a small number of people with a with a big big microphone. Uh, a similar story to Destiny Church and, and their attack yeah. on on our, on, our, on our trans Fano. But here's the thing: if you want to compare Fano space or Fornal space or woman space to the KKK, you've got to be actually quite unwell. Right? Not one not one act of lynching has ever occurred in those in those spaces. Uh, children haven't been um, bombed in their churches as a result of uh, as as a result of women's space in New Zealand. So the comparison just uh, is is done by someone I think is is fundamentally unwell. Does separatism occur at Auckland University or Waikato University or or, or, or Victoria? Absolutely, it does. Only thirteen percent of those that attend those institutions are, are Maori. Their failure rate is higher if we compare it to our compare it to our own Wananga. The number of Maori and all Pacifica that that are tenured um, professors. Is very low. The m number of Māori or Pacifica um, sisters and brothers that sit on university councils is is very low. So does separatism occur in our universities? Absolutely, it does. Follow up question. This was all sparked by a tweet on Twitter. Shouldn't ACT, New Zealand First and National, be focused on the massive challenges in front of this country rather than stamping out spaces for minority groups on campus? Well, they, they, yeah, the, and, and see, this will revisit them because they think that by running these hot topics of the day that will divert uh, what the real issues are. And the real issues are that our economy is going south, that un unemployment is rising, that court that they haven't been able to manage and they won't manage core inflation and interest rates aren't going down any time soon and those are the issues whether you'll be a Māori or Pacifica or Pākehā that concern New Zealanders and sooner or later they'll have to address those issues but they won't be able to. Damien, ACT Party MP Dr uh, Pamji Palmer in 2023 attended a pro-Indian government event in New Zealand and <coughs> praised Prime Minister uh, Modi saying PM Modi during the last nine years has taken the nation forward and has ensured the development of all communities <coughs> living in the country, which is interesting because, of course, Modi has been accused of an authoritarian tactics leading to widespread religious violence last year that saw hundreds of villages destroyed, Christian churches and schools torched, widespread sexual assault of women, 50,000 fleeing their homes and hundreds dead. Why, and I say why, are we listening to a politician wanting to stamp out minority spaces on campus when she is praising an authoritarian leader who was accused of stamping out minorities in India? This would be somebody um, who presumably believes in separate spaces for people on different races. I'm not too sure that your argument holds, but I don't know much about Indian politics. Um, I do notice that some people claim that Hindu Vati is some sort of a 
racist, evil thing, but 80% of um, Hindus apparently believe it. But anyway, um, I don't know enough about Indian politics to, to comment, but I, <coughs> I, am, I am heartened to hear the two of you, you know, embracing these issues because... I believe. Here we go. Believe, here we go. This I is, believe. No, I don't embrace it. No, them. we don't embrace it. I, I, reject I them. believe. No, no, no. But, but you, yeah, you got queer spaces and you got mm. Maori spaces and you yeah. and yeah. so so what? You're, plenty, of, plenty of parking yeah. spaces and out so, there, mate. And and so yeah. what you're saying? Did you see the CEO um, CEO list today, mate? What exclusively, exclusively parking. So and, don't tell us that parking spaces don't and, exist. And, right? so, and so, so yeah. what what we're saying is that we wanna we wanna have an environment. Yeah. Where People can selectively only be with their own kind and race, and I believe, no, no. and I believe absolutely. That name, we five Ma- name five name five mates that come to your house on a regular should, basis, mate. Name should, five. We no, no, you accuse us of being separatists, mate. But I want to say to you, Damien, no, you're you're shame. the separatist. You're missing we the live, No, no, no. I understand your point, and we get this shit all the time. <laughs> we live in both worlds every day. Don't accuse us of separatism, Damien. No, you're saying you are not listening to me. I support because you're talking shit. I believe you should be able to <laughs> discriminate on the yeah. grounds of race. I believe you should be able to discriminate well, we on don't, the grounds we, of race. Well, we of, don't because we live and operate in a bicultural, so, multicultural world every so day, Damien. You when don't. I saw, when when um, uh, you <laughs> Shane, you know nothing about my life. So um, uh, with well, respect, answer that question. With, with, answer uh, that question, Damien. With, with with respect, I don't yeah. think you should be commenting on the my nature of my life. Yeah, but, well. But okay, tell I, us about but it. But I fundamentally believe. Tell us you how you operate in a biocultural world on a daily basis. I mean, you don't. Who no, does this show? <laughs> I'm sitting in the room with you. But we do. I have no problem. I have no problem with organisations saying, "Hey, this is for people of our group and our tribe, whether it's your race, whether it's your religion, whether it's your sexuality. I don't care. And if you want to have a space that is exclusively for Maori." I am fine with that. If you want to have a space that is exclusively for Indians, I am fine with that. Mm. And if you want to have, if you want to set up a club and it's only for white rich men, I am fine with that too. But well, Northern I believe, Club is. <laughs> I, um, I, I believe. Called the Northern Club. I believe that this obsession we have. We don't. With, um, with this obsession we have, with. Oh my goodness! You know we've. Um, you might have an obsession, JT, and I don't have an obsession because no. we operate in a in a bicultural world on a daily basis, Damien. Well, how are we mm. obsessed by it? That's the way we operate. We understand Hold our. On. We understand. John, John, we understand John, our. John, we understand our. We understand our Scottish. We understand You're our the Scottish of party. Of the party. And it's a rights-based party. <laughs> yeah, not it's, a race-based yeah, party. Yeah, that's right. Is, and you've got to John, get that into your head, yeah. John. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is called to party Mary. Mm. It is. What would you want us to be called? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, not care. honky. Yeah, the yeah. not honky yeah. party. What, what would you no, want us to be I called? Have no, I have no problem yeah. with a race based party. I, it, does, it does not worry me. No, no, right space. No, no, we're not. Hang on, hang on. Tim's going to have But I just want to talk about that. Like, like somebody right said it's a race based party because some racist arrived here and determined that there should be racism, right? I didn't. Yeah. Māori didn't. <laughs> so Te Pāti Māori is a, a party for the indigenous people, mm. and they've got constitutional rights upon which they consented to people like mm. Damien to come here. Mm. Nice people that we are. Mm. Good people. Yeah. But, but they turned on us. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the problem that we've got right now is, is that we're not allowed to be Māori. We've got to be nice, white, brown people. And that's what they want us to be. But the problem is that ain't ever going to be, right? Mm. So I just want to be a proud Māori. Mm. And and I want to say I'm a proud Māori rather than feel in saying that I, I have just mm. uh, jilted him, offended mm. him. How? And, and, and no, how, I don't know because I don't care. when you're privileged <laughs> and you're a supremacist and <laughs> everything's been going your way, I, hold on, you, hold so, on. some people do get a bit upset. You can, you, can, you can say I'm privileged, but you shouldn't say I'm a, I'm a, a supremacist. No, 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 no. Um, no, well, no, yeah, you got to you be your, your, your <laughs> taxpayers. Yeah, comrades, but, but also. comrades, we must move on <laughs> no, to Shane, issue you're, three. You're about to say oh, no, no, I'm just, I'm just about to say uh, that uh, on most Māori issues, you are on the other side of the divide from us. Uh, you support, Name one. You, su- you, you support, you, su- you support the ongoing genocide of our Palestinian brothers and sisters through your support of Israel. That yeah. makes you a supremacist. 
No, that makes you an anti-Semite. Mm. Comrades, no. we must move on to issue three before fists start flying. While this hard-right, racist, climate-denying, beneficiary-bashing government goes romper-stomper, the Labour Party still languish in the polls. And Chris Hipkins is still claiming he has no idea why Labour lost and that he really wouldn't change mm. anything by saying, and I quote, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, the tide comes in and the tide goes out. Uh, sure, but not having any meaningful election policy platform and no vision didn't help either, eh, Chippy? Labour won the COVID war but lost the COVID peace because the incrementalism only wanted to rebuild to the existing inequality mm. rather than expand and grow beyond that. We were promised in transformative change by Jacinda in 2017, what we got was less left wing than the British Tory party. Shane, Labour's decision mm. to not back the Māori Party's GST or food bill yes. shows Labour still have no idea who they are supposed to and, be and, governing and for. The Greens, doesn't. And, the Greens. and the Greens. I'm very, yeah. I'm very disappointed because you know what? You can. I, I talked to some of my friends with the Labour Party. Said, well, it was a very badly worded private members. Well, what a load of bullshit! What they should have done is they should have allowed it to run its course. So we should have. So we could have held the duopolies to account. So we could have had a true and proper discussion about why, in a country that we produce enough food to for. for, for 40 million people that we have insecurity and that our food banks are closing down because uh, they're just simply not coping. Yeah. Uh, so I just think it was a massive missed opportunity on the left to coalesce and coordinate. Follow-up question. Isn't the political issue for every left-wing party how they tax the rich to pay for the underfunded social infrastructure that is gridlocking and imploding? And hasn't the Labour Party's incrementalism on that issue made them the problem rather than the solution? Yeah, I, I, I would imagine... I, look, I've got to say this, that uh, mm. the values-based speech that uh, Hipkins delivered a couple of weeks ago I think was damage control. He knows that there's a move within, within the... Yes, own course there within is. The Labor it's Party true. It's that true. They want a comprehensive... They want a comprehensive capital gains tax and uh, I don't think it's about taxing the rich I, th I just think that we have a very unfair tax system where workers pay proportionally mm. more than landlords etc Damien in his State of the Nation speech to the nation last month Chippy repudiated the 40 year neoliberal experiment the fourth Labour government embarked upon is that enough to trick long-suffering Labour Party voters that they might get a left wing party only for Chippy to do sweet bugger all again I think you can see from the last election, the the middle of electorate is not particularly interested in those sorts of hard left agendas. Mm. I understand that's a talking point on the left that mm. they believe that if if we had only been more Jeremy Corbyn like, we would have won. But I don't think that the electorate is there, and the risk for the Labour Party is they they lost and they lost from uh, a, a number of reasons, and I think they lost because. Hepkins is right, the tide just went out. <coughs> but if they if they believe that the solution is to adopt the sort of policies that kept the Labour Party in the wilderness for so long in the United Kingdom, then I think they may well end up replicating the same thing. The majority of New Zealanders uh, vote somewhere in the centre. Mm. The world and is so, changing. The and so, is they're, so they're not... Yeah. No, but, I mean, on the, on the margins, you're right. There mm. is more hard right wing and hard left wing people now than there were you know 20 years ago but i think the vast majority of new zealanders they right. didn't vote for act and they didn't vote for new zealand first and they didn't vote for the party maori they voted for the labor party and the national party uh, yeah. and those two parties are mm. still relatively in the center that's <laughs> where elections are won and lost follow-up question this this government <clears throat> is burning through goodwill faster than trump at a lesbian folk festival uh, maybe all chippy has to do is just hold his mm. breath and wait and the cycle will come mm. around again no i i don't think it will um, uh, you saw, I mean, Adern got two turns. She was probably a bit lucky. If it wasn't for COVID, you know, I mean, she no. probably would have won a second term, but the, the polls weren't, um, no. weren't, weren't great. But, no, right. but she probably still would have won a second term. It's going to be quite difficult, I think, for this government to be kicked out in two and a half years' <clears throat> time. I think it's, it's, you know, how long has it been since we had a one-term government? It's quite a while. Four. And so if you're, if you're Chris Hipkins, I mean, he's still relatively young, I don't understand why you would want to spend, um, well, compared to us, John, he <laughs> is young. So I don't, but I don't understand why, if you're looking at him and his life choices, 
why stick around to to potentially almost certainly lose the next election? I'd just go and go. You should go away and do something and make some money. Do what Simon John, Bridges is John, Labour and the Greens didn't support the Māori Party bill to remove GST from food. How can the left defeat this hard right racist climate denying beneficiary bashing government if the left won't work together. Yeah, well just three quick things firstly. Yeah. Okay so the first thing is is that um, there's no doubt that neoliberal economics uh, as an art form uh, taken to be the be all and end all is in disrepair everywhere. Mm. Uh, but from, from, from an intellectual perspective, philosophical perspective and in terms of execution. What we've got is uh, see Chippy, he was um, a uh, a worker administrator uh, with Clark yeah. and Co. So what what we've got, Clark and Cullen were um, in the left of a, a right wing government, yeah. right? And they had the opportunity over nine long years to change that. Did nothing, right? Did nothing. Their acolytes, Adern, worked in there. Yep. So did Chippy. So did Grant. They got they got up there and they got nothing, right? Yeah. In in twenty twenty, they had the chance to do everything that they needed to do. They did nothing. Right. Okay, so when, when you look at a regressive tax regime called GST yeah. that adversely the impacts on, 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 on mm. the working person, mm. yeah. and you've got a whole sh- a schematic mm. Mm. of taxes because it wasn't one off, mm. uh, GST off would require taxation on capital gains and wealth mm. okay, to make the books balance. Uh, that, that tax would have worked. Yeah. No, no, the Greens refused to support it. So did Labour. What, what the Party Māori says is we don't care. What we care about is that we keep honest and truthful mm. to um, our own truths, to our own rights, and we'll continue to pursue that. It doesn't matter because if you look at the Green Movement around the world, um, it has won uh, out of opposition more concessions mm. than it has ever sitting at a cabinet table. Uh, is Chloe Swarbrick a leader the Māori Party can work with? <clears throat> Uh, not after a speech on the GST, okay? So uh, what she's going to have to do is... Uh, what, did, what, did, what did she say on the GST, sorry, John? They, they voted it down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Greens voted it down, so did Labour. And so um, it's a, it was a perverse debate, okay? Well, you've got this right-wing government smashing, bashing everybody from beneficiaries all the way through uh, and then giving tax cuts to the filthy few uh, and the rich. Um, but... Do you then have a bill being argued in the House that you can anchor uh, a lot of your theory to and a lot of what you stand for and your values, and they sold out their values on that day? And the first real economic debate, because you've got to remember that uh, by and large this government has used urgency. They haven't had, they haven't had um, select committees. Mm-hmm. They haven't mm-hmm. had real debate. This was an opportunity to create create that debate. Not only did the Labour Party and the Greens not vote for it, what they did do. And when it came to the first real economic debate, the first real economic issue... They ran and, away. No, 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 no. Worse than that. They voted with National. They voted with ACT. They voted with New Zealand First. So, Shane, oh, just, just yeah. why, why... Give me an example of where you think this, this government is particularly and aggrievously right-wing. I, 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 think that, I think that we need a strong, robust... Uh, uh, pub- public service, I think gutting the public service by the numbers they're talking about will will and have already affected frontline services. Talk to any, talk to any cop mm. on the beat. Mm. Talk to any cop on the Race beat. Is talk, to, the talk, to any, talk to any are cop they, on they, the beat. Are they reducing the number of police officers? No. They, well, they, they, they're, they're certainly not, they, they're certainly not they reducing... going to be able... No, no. Can I, I'll answer sorry, your question. Sorry, Shane. Uh, I'll answer your question by simply saying this that skivvies play a very important role in terms of supporting police. You get rid of the skivvies, that means the police are doing administrative work rather than um, providing support in terms of law and order. Quick round, will Chippy still be leader of the Labour Party at the next election? Damien Grant? Yes. JT? I hope not. Shane? Uh, 50-50. I, don't, uh, 50-50. I think he's in a sort of privileged position at the moment and that is no one really, no one really wants it. But he has to get his act together. Hey, here's and, the thing. Here's the thing. He, that caucus, yeah, yeah. that caucus is so bereft yeah. of talent. Oh, it, w- it was the worst cabinet mm, right. that we ever saw mm, in terms right. of talent. Right. Right. See, the l- least you can say about this National Party um, caucus and cabinet is that it's very strong. They've got, they've got very brains. Able, they've got brains. They're very able people. Mm. Right. Okay. So this government, uh, the Labour government, was run uh, over the last period by its bureaucrats. Yes. No doubt about it. Yeah. It, it never had ministers there. Look at Andrew Little for goodness sakes. 
for, you know, and, and you, you can count them all off. They just surrendered. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah. They had no idea. Can I? Can I? I look, so no I, talent. I, no I, talent. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. He'll, survive, I, I, I he'll survive. He'll survive solely because, because there's, there's no, no other talent. talent I, I, I wouldn't go as far as JT in terms of no talent because I think there actually is some talent. I could name Who? three or four: Barbara Edmonds, Arena I think she, Williams. I think she's very talented. She's but, here, but here's the thing: I think in terms of fundamental economic. Um, policy, the the caucus is more fractious than uh, most people Yes, think. I know it is, and there could be a rolling. I know. And if the whip was loosened, Māori caucus would have voted for the GST bill. Mm. Mm. Comrades, well, we need a word I mean, from our let's, sponsor. Let's, let's, uh, all right, our, our sponsor. Oh my God, <laughs> our glorious yes, yes. sponsor. The glorious sponsor. Uh, our our long-suffering sponsor, <laughs> and suffering. very loyal sponsor, Ridiculous is so. Gravity Gravity Credit Management. Gravity Credit Management, uh, and I was I caught up with Andrew Kingston on uh, Thursday, just before the Easter long weekend. And Andrew was saying he's having quite a bit of success at the moment picking up debt buying opportunities. And so these are businesses that are looking at their cash flow and thinking, goodness, I wouldn't mind a bit more extra cash. Uh, and so they are coming to Gravity Credit Management and they're saying, hey, having a look at their ledger and asking Andrew what they what, what he would pay to take over some of those non-performing and older loans. So if you're in that situation, give Andrew a call, 0800 Gravity, or go to gravitycredit.co.nz and Andrew would be delighted to talk to you. He's feeling a bit lonely and sad at the moment. So, uh, you know. Thank you for that. Comrades, we need to move on to issue four. What are going to be the big issues this year politically? Damien Grant. We don't know. That's, uh, that's, I mean, who saw COVID coming? You know? mm. Nobody. Who, who saw the Ukraine war coming? I, well, you did, to me, be fair. Um, but, but so... What is going to is going it's going to be the unexpected, right? Will will she have a crack at Taiwan? You know, I've I have no idea. But I think the issues that are going to, denomin, to dominate the agenda are issues that currently are not on our time horizon. JT, what are we going to see the big issues this year? Oh no, big issues uh, this year. Uh, the um, May thirtieth budget. Yep. Because you know you finally the 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 brouhaha about repealing, taking back. Ripping out things uh, is done and dusted. What, what are you replacing them with? Right. Okay. So, so the first marquee event that, that actually typifies this, all governments, is the first budget, second yeah. budget, and third budget leading into election. First budget, we'll see. Okay. We'll be able to determine thereafter uh, the evidence uh, and, and tease out what might or might not work thereafter. Shame, big issues this year. Inflation will stick. Yes. Interest rates will stick. Yes. Unemployment will rise. We will have ourselves, folks, a real recession. Oh, please, please. I have been confidently <laughs> predicting recession for about 12 years now. And he wishes for 12 it every day. I know. long years. Come on. How long can this... this do you remember the, the Roadrunner series where, was it Wiley E. Coyote? He goes off the end of the cliff and the little... Well, it's not a rodent, is he? What's what? I don't know. But he, he's going off and he's not falling down. That's the economy. No, when, no, all no, of the, all when, of the data indicates that mm. we should have crashed four years ago, when G, and when we're still uh, going. When GDP is going backwards. Yeah. That's one thing. But when GDP is going backwards, but when you're living in a place not like, a crash. Well, no, no. When you're go, when you're living in a place like Kaitaia or Portiki, Fakatani, and you've got an impl- uh, unemployment rates of seven, eight to twelve percent, that's real recession. That's where it hits the mark. Comrades, we must wrap the show with a final word. Damien Grant, your final word this week, please, sir. Uh, I want to just dwell on some of the commentary that's coming from, including the three people in this uh, mm. room. The the ongoing hand wringing that this is the most hard right, racist, neoliberal government that's controlled by the Atlas Network. If Christopher Hipkins and his colleagues want to get back into power anytime soon. They need to stop this nonsense because it's not ringing true. Christopher Luxon, to my considerable annoyance, is a marginally centre-right conservative figure. He is not going to upend the social welfare state. He will tweak around at the edges. You are not going to see the wholesale slashing of government departments, although we certainly should. And where the left continue to jump up and down and make these allegations and claims, they're going to lose the centre. This is a marginally centre-right government. It is not a hard-right racist extremist government. And the more people claim it is, 
you are doing Christopher Luxon and his friends a favour. John, your final word this week, please, sir. Oh, I've never heard so much rubbish <laughs> spoken in all my life. <laughs> like, it is it is a hard... And you were in the right Helen wing. Clark government. It is a yeah. hard right-wing <laughs> right wing government, there's no doubt about it, on, on all levels. Look, uh, can I give an example? Like, Three Waters. Okay, so as soon as Three Waters is done with, rip it out. Okay, that's cool. Right now, uh, double-digit, double-digit rates up and down this country. None of these stupid little territorial authorities or these mm. stupid little rural communities... Uh, I, as an Aucklander, am not subsidising people in the north or south of here solely because they're too stupid over getting all of their <coughs> all of their systems and their assets together to take a far more strategic investment approach uh, in, in regard to Three Waters infrastructure. So just using that as one example, what is going to be the alternative to that? There's not one, right? There is not one. Unless you get aggregation and get scale, and then understand um, exactly where you should be investing. You're going to have piecemeal nonsense and little repair jobs. And I'm just using Three Waters as one example out of several that uh, have been unbundled by this government for all the wrong reasons, for all, uh, just, just for political reasons, as opposed to moving a nationhood forward. Shane, your final word this week, please, sir. Yep. Um, the anti-trans movement. Read it's ugly head again. It's driven by insecurity and hate money by a small number of people with large microphones that have lost on gay rights issues. They lost on their opposed to civil marriages, gay marriage, and peeling back uh, discrimination law laws. This is their last bigoted stand. Here's a simple fact: more people aligned or holding positions of power in churches have been convicted <coughs> for pedophile right. pedophilia <laughs> than, drag, than queens. drag queens. Right, right. <laughs> Damien, you want to rap? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know, but how many? Um, so this is where you say thanks. It's been great. No, Shane, I just, I just, JT. Okay, I just don't quite. That's not the. That's not the um, issue with the uh, trans what's, thing. What's my, the issue? my, my, what's my, the issue, my Daniel? issue with. It, I don't care what an adult does. I think you do. Um, no, no, he doesn't. No, he I, really doesn't. I, I know, really he's libertarian. I, Trust I really, me. I really what's, don't. What's you the wanna, issue? You want to you do whatever you, you want. The, What's the issue? The, the issue that kind of struck home for me um, uh, is puberty blockers. Um, and I looked at this issue vaguely about three there years ago. There are some ago. issues in this. And the, and the Ministry of Health website said puberty blockers were reversible. And so mm. without really thinking or paying too much attention, I just said, well, fair enough. Okay, well, if all you're doing is kicking the can down the road. It now turns out that puberty blockers are not Mm. reversible mm. and they have the effect of damaging the fertility of young people and um, and the one thing because this one I, you, you interv my interview with this grimmer guy whatever his name is um, Graham Linehan and I asked him the question why isn't there a debate I would like to see the people who believe that puberty blockers are I would like to see an actual educated debate where two people sit there and because my instinctive reaction is reasonably hostile to this stuff but I'm 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 open to, to listening mm. to the evidence but we don't get the evidence all we get is you're a, you're a, you're evil and horrible and and so what what concerns me if you're 18 and you're an adult whatever you know but but if you're not I'm very suspicious that things like puberty blockers are, are perhaps a very bad idea Thank you, issue. comrades, to my final word this week. Two things tonight. One, the political problem for the right in New Zealand is deep. Luxon is out of his depth mm -hmm. and is being played week in and week out by Act in New Zealand First, while the total lack of anything resembling a vision and policy platform has been glossed over by industry and lobbyist election talking points, which will look openly venal once the policy is written. If you think you are angry now, wait until you see what national attempt to make law for their donors. Mm. That key has had to reach out to Luxon and attempt to talk him down from the $19 billion tax cut tax break highlights how concerned National Party Mandarins are. The majority of national voters voted national in the hope their house price would go up 10%. They sure as Christ weren't voting for culture war revenge fantasies masquerading as social policy. When the vast majority of Kiwis see the pittance they are getting in tax cuts, the extremeness of this government's agenda will violently backlash. And finally, tonight. It would be remiss of us 
to start season three of the working group without mentioning the passing of our comrade Efeso Collins. Mm. <clears throat> Efeso appeared on the working group many times and he was one of my oldest friends. His compassion, his wisdom and his leadership will be sorely missed. Our thoughts with his wife Fia and his treasured daughters. The left have a collective responsibility to ensure Efeso's legacy is not desecrated by this hard right racist climate denying beneficiary bashing government. Now he's torn with the weather. That was the Working Group, New Zealand's number one weekly political podcast that's not funded by New Zealand On Air. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube and Rover. We'll see you Tuesday next week when Simon Wilson and Michael Wood are our guests. Kia ora and ka pai. You stay classy, Aotearoa. Hooray! That was New Zealand's greatest weekly political podcast, The Working Group. Not one minute of this show was funded by New Zealand On Air. No, nope, no creamy public broadcasting money for us. That was... The Working Group.